And now I'm delighted to introduce Felix Perez Fulch Jr., who is a very popular speaker uh, at ATA events. Felix is retired from a career in the military during which he attracted many people to stamp collecting, something he still does virtually every day. A marvelous thing about Felix is the way he draws parallels to people and events in his life and his stamps. For Felix, every stamp tells a story. I think we'll hear one tonight. Felix? All right, thank you, Dawn, and thank you, uh, Bill, for that presentation, introduction. Uh, greetings, everyone from Mississippi. Uh, I just want you to let you know that this presentation was done during the Great American Stamp Show last year. So at the end of this presentation, there is no stamp show. Do not attempt to go to a stamp show, walk from your house to think you're gonna go buy stuff and spend money. But we do have an ATA website. We do have an ATA website where you can purchase tastes of topicals, handbooks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let me get the slides ready so we can start. One second. All right, two stamps, one journey. Uh, it was uh, last year, a month before the presentations were due, and Dawn said, hey, can I do a presentation? So I said, okay, but it was a quick suspense. So I had to think real quick, and then I came up with the idea, two stamps, one journey, because my number, favorite number is 21. Uh, the two stamps are the one from Puerto Rico Sky to One, which I started collecting while I was in the Air Force. And then the second one was uh, the Mississippi 150th anniversary. And I started collecting that when I moved over to uh, Mississippi and retired. Now I carry a passport, I put it in the middle. Uh, I could have put two, the blue one also, but it wouldn't be two stamps, one journey. Uh, I've been two stamps and two passports, et cetera. But uh, the main thing is that I put the passport there because I deployed around the world. And right where the passport is at, right beyond, under it, is what we call the sandbox. That's basically Africa. Uh, and that's where I deployed most of my years besides other places, that was the majority. I'm currently uh, the webmaster for the uh, Puerto Rico Society. And that's the, on the left, that logo. And I'm also uh, currently uh, just got selected to be the uh, director for the Phoenix and Stamp Study Unit. I think that's the most fun unit that we have as far as the ATA uh, stamp study units. All right, plan of action. I'm gonna talk about the first stamp, the second stamp, uh, joining Philatech organizations, exhibiting and displaying your collection, and I'll have a plug in there for the ATA exhibit, uh, one page exhibit. Promoting the hobby, latest topic, and fun ways to say goodbye using stamps. Like any presentation I've done, we're gonna, three things are gonna happen, I can guarantee you. You're gonna learn, we're gonna travel, and we're gonna connect with people, places, and things. Now, since this was a presentation that I, I did uh, at the Great American Stamp Show, I had to make sure that let everyone know that I did get my COVID-19 vaccine. And then this is an example uh, that I actually got it on April 2nd, which if you know Foster Miller, that's the same day as his birthday. So I canceled it and I celebrated and got my, my shot. Now, the reason I did my COVID card is because anytime, even in Mississippi and other places I travel, they want to show proof of vaccination. So I found that as a great way to promote the hobby by showing my two topics, which is my two stamps, Mississippi and Puerto Rico. And then recently, even though I'm not, even though I'm not uh, over 60 yet, I did fight to get my third shot, my booster shot, because of my medical, my medical records. And I was able to get it on my birthday because that way, if I forget, you know, when I got my shot, I think pretty sure I can remember it was my birthday. <laughs> Now, magic. Now, I always got to give a reason why I have a beard. And so this one is about magic. I talked to some kids during our youth club uh, at our Gulf Pex uh, stamp show, and they were talking, and I showed them the rules that they shouldn't be touching stamps with their fingers, et cetera. And then, so I told them, hey, you want to see some magic? And especially, they wanted to see some magic because I told them I forgot my, my tweezers or my pair of tongues. And uh, so they, like, show me Mr. Perez so I'm like well I don't have my pair of tongues what do I do and then one of the students said 
hey, you could borrow mine. I said, no, I need to get mine. So I said, hey, do you believe in magic? And I said, oh, yeah, we believe in magic. So I said, okay, I need a magic word. So some of them said, abacadabra. And I'm like, okay, but something related to stamp. So they came up with stamp a cadabra. So then I said, okay, that's a good one. So let's, let's count the one, two, three, and say the magic word. So they'll count one, two, three, stamp a cadabra, nothing happened. And then I said, let's do it again, but louder. One, two, three, stamp a cadabra. Then I'll go into my beard, and then eventually I'll pull a pair of tweezers. Now, most, most kids will say, well, can you do that again? I said, no, that's only a one-time trick because I have to put it back in my beard. <laughs> now, I'll talk about magic this month here. Recently, AT&T did some magic on me. I always had BlackBerry phones. And, of course, due to 5G, they took it away. So I just canceled the, a cover, a postcard, February 9th, because my BlackBerry no longer exists. I can't use it. So now they gave me a Calypso, totally different type of phone. And that's why I did that little cover there. Now, since it's February, I want to talk about positive stuff. Of course, we have band time today, and if you saw my Facebook page, celebrate my 22nd year anniversary married to Isabella. So I had an idea that I passed around, especially during the Atlanta show, about taking two stamps and making a, 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 a sentence or, 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 or a, just a, a sentence with, with two stamps. So I came up with one, and it was successful. And I put, I told my wife, put it on a card, and this was part of the envelope, I love you like no other. And it worked out perfectly. But of course, if you try to do this attempt this to use two stamps to send something out, I still had to give her chocolates and flowers. Now, of course, I did get some feedback about this idea. And I said, hey, maybe I could put this, get a job at Hallmark and create some of these uh, uh, stamp postcards. And they told me, no, it might be the way they used the word corny section. So I said, hey, that's a good idea. And if we have a corny section, so what I did was take two stamps and call it corny. I used two stamps, one with a knee and one with corn. Now, the first time we're going to talk about is the Fortaleza. And of course, that all started with a journey. And my parents are Puerto Rico. Then they moved to New Jersey. And then I went to Wisconsin. Now, I have no idea up to this date why we went to Wisconsin. Now, we only stood there a year, but I had no idea. Now, my thing was I had to make a connection with one of the first day ceremonies being held at the Great American Stamp Show. And that was backyard games. I had nothing to say. I couldn't find anything. So then I said, wait a minute. I don't know about backyard games because everywhere I lived in New Jersey or Wisconsin, it was either on a second floor or a third floor apartment. So I said, mm, what about indoor games? So it brought me to a, a, a back with my sisters. We had an indoor game. We like to do rollerblading, but we didn't have roller skates. We didn't have anything to rollerblade with. So what we did was we cleared uh, our, our the living room and moved it over to the dining room. And then, of course, we thought about safety, so we took all the cushions, put them by the window. Of course, it was the second floor, so nothing would happen to us. But the thing was to make we had to make uh, be able to play. So what we did was we used two things: we used pledge to spray it all over the floor, and then, of course, we used uh, pajamas, one suit pajamas, so we could just skate all day around and just knock each other out and play a uh, uh, rollerblading. But the thing was that we never really got in trouble because we knew where my mom left, etc. And then when she came back, but one time we did get in trouble because we forgot we lived in the second floor. So the first neighbors thought on us and my mom. Well, okay, now if you were, didn't go to the to the uh, uh, Great American Stamp Show and when they had the issues of the backyard game stamps, you can still obtain them through our ATA website. Those are ATA official caches. Now after Wisconsin, we're back to New Jersey. Then we went to Puerto Rico and then back to New Jersey. Now, while I was in New Jersey, I graduated and then I went on the delay list program and joined the Air Force. When the Air Force sent me to Texas, that was our basic training. And that was the first time as an adult I said I missed my mommy. Then uh, I ended up going to tech school. That's my uh, specialty for communications. I went to Mississippi, not knowing I was going to retire in Mississippi, eventually ended up in Mississippi again. And they sent me to Acre Air Force Base, Arkansas. And of course, I never been no place besides Puerto Rico or, or, or Wisconsin or, or, or uh, New Jersey. Now here is where I went to Acre Air Force Base. My hobbies were music and computer coding. That's what I did. And as you see, my favorite color is blue. If you can see by that curtain, that lamp, et cetera, is blue. So if you need an interior decorator, do not hire me because it'll be blue. Now, you're going to see on the second picture, besides my love me wall there, of, of, of uh, 
stuff that I received while in, in the Air Force. I, you see that little keyboard right there? That keyboard I purchased because I wanted to make uh, music. Now, where I purchased that was at a Piggly Wiggly. I had no idea what the Piggly was until I ended up in Arkansas. Now, in that Piggly Wiggly, a person approached me, and we were online, me to pay, and he asked me, where are you from? I never been, really been asked that question uh, in person. So I didn't know. I was like, man, I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm from New Jersey. So I kind of questioned myself. And that questioning myself made me want to research about my culture, our people in Puerto Rico. So I did that. I went to a Sears and tried to buy a second pit of Botanica, but it was too expensive. So I didn't do that. So what I ended up doing was going to Montgomery Ward and thrift stores. And I started buying the letter P. Now I have a collection, which I call my 13 P. These are some of them. And these letters talk about Puerto Rico and every single one. And then I noticed that based on the ideology that they might say different things on different events. So I was still confused, but I still want to learn about Puerto Rico. So I continued reading books. The, the Eighth Air Force Base uh, I was stationed at closed down. So then they told me where you want to go. I said, I want to go back home because I was homesick. So I said, I want to go to New Jersey. So I ended up in New Jersey, still buying books, still trying to learn about Puerto Rico. But while, while being in New Jersey, the most thing, I, the, everything I did was deploy, deploy, deploy. So I deployed around the world uh, for multiple years until 1997. And then uh, on one of the deployments, not knowing that I was gonna collect stamps, I had purchased a souvenir here from when I was uh, in Kenya under uh, Pride Relief and Restore Hope operation. So I never knew I was gonna collect it, but I still had the set unopened. Now, one of the things that while I was in New Jersey, I bought books and I bought this book here. It was by Augusto Hernandez Mendez. So I started reading it. It was very important, that was in 97. And then all of a sudden I get to page 157 and it talks and it shows this Puerto Rico Scott 801. And I'm like, whoa. So I called my dad collect and uh, he answered. And then I told my dad, I said, hey, did you know there's a stamp in Puerto Rico? And he's like, oh no, there's no such thing as that. So I didn't pay attention, I just pressed on. Now, one thing I wanna know is on this stamp, there was a total of 81,292,450. Now, because if Billy might see this video, I know I'm not here, but I'm in this area on how many stamps I do have. And there's a reason for that. Not that I'm an accumulator, but I collect a little bit of everything from that stamp. Now, eventually I ended up in Florida. Didn't pay attention to that stamp, went to Florida. And that's when I actually purchased the stamp in Florida. Now you see me here and you probably said, man, Felix looks disciplined, concentrated. He's working on that, prepared. But no, I actually was thinking about the Tampa Stat Club meeting at 6 p.m. that day. Now, I eventually got that stamp and I bought it and I'll show you the next slide will show where I bought it at. And then, but the thing was when I got to Florida, the first thing that happened, of course, I got my assignment to go to Florida. The second thing that happened was I became a stamp collector. And the third one, which I always say was the most important part of VCS Bellion, I always will say that, is that of course I met her and we were married. And that's and two years later. Now I bought the uh, Bellion stamping coin, they're still open. Eventually I need to go over there and uh, take a picture of the area and the guy, he's still alive. So I want to take a picture with him. So hopefully during Florex this year, I'll be able to attend and take a photo with him. Now I did decide to expertise my first stamp that I ever collected. The reason being, if you see down there, it's 2014. And I deployed so many years since, since 1989, all the way to 2014, I deployed. And during this time, when they certified it, I was in Liberia. My concern was that I've been pretty lucky that I've been able to come back from all these deployments so I told his best, say, I'm going to get this expertise just in case they let everybody know that this was my first stamp I ever collected. And I said, I got it at the uh, Billy Stamping Coin. Another reason why I collect this, if you take these old pages, these stamps that were issued back in 1937s, when you separate it in the perforation, it's almost like fingerprints. No matter what, you're not, you separate it, you're not going to affect, find the same exact. They're all going to be different. Perforations are going to be ripped up in different locations, and it's not going to be set in the same way as others. So they're all unique, just like fingerprints. And that's the reason why I have that uh, stamp expertise. And then this is what I submitted to the APS. Of course, uh, every time I go to the APS, it's to expertise. And of course, they thought I was a little crazy trying to expertise a three cent stamp, you know, in, 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 uh, in 2014. But my intent was that I wanted to make sure that everybody knows that was my first stamp. Now, other items I've been able to do to the pandemic to collect of course, of these two Dorothy Net covers and thank you, Doug Wise, and me being part, you know, uh, of different organizations, I've been able to meet him. And he used to be in New Orleans and he was in a lot. So he was able to give me these two covers. 
So I'm pretty sure I'm getting pretty good on um, my items to collect and hopefully accept them for Boston 2026. Now, after, after the Air Force, I went to Texas. I was still in the Air Force, went to Texas and I applied for special duty. And that's where I became a certified instructor in Lackland Air Force Base, which is the only basic training for enlisted. So I went there, did five years, uh, became a master uh, trainer, master instructor, and then uh, decided that I want to do something else. So I decided to switch over to the Army. And I had no break in service and went over to the Army. And they decided after Kentucky basic training to send me back to Texas, which I went to Fort Hood. Now, while in Texas, they sent me all around the world, deployed with the first CAV from Katrina all the way to a couple of Gulf Wars, Gulf, Gulf deployments, and then eventually Japan, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when I was in Texas in the Army thinking, I have a lot of time to think about stuff, I thought about, wait a minute, I got my first time from Florida. And according to history, and of course, I put this in quotes that Ponce Leon, you know, discovered Florida and in Florida. So I was like, okay, and he came by ship. I said, okay, I came to Florida by car via I-95. So we got something in common. We both arrived there. Now, the thing he was, he got wounded. Uh, from the uh, indigenous, the Caluso tribes. And then he died eventually in uh, 1521 in Cuba. Now, one thing was that it's still a myth, according to most uh, historians, that he went to find the, uh, the fountain of youth. Now, back to him getting injured. And if it was an arrow, like some of the uh, historians say, then I also got hit by an arrow, but that was hit by a different arrow. That was the arrow from Cupid. That's how I fell in love with Belia. Now, the second thing about the youth stuff that of course he didn't find a fountain of youth and most historians don't think that did happen. But what I did realize, and here's another cover showing that he came by ship in Florida and it says that he discovered Florida. But what I did realize that anytime I collect stamps, even now I feel young. I might not look young, but I feel young. Now it all depends how young you feel, but to me, it takes me back to the seventies. So I'm actually gonna show you a picture of what I'm talking about. This is where it takes me. This is where I show students this. Because student says, what happened, Mr. Perez, especially now with a beard? Because I tell him, yeah, I used to be in my hair, but when you get older, it shifts, now it's on my chin. So those are the, uh, one of the, uh, is everybody still there? Hello? Yep, we're here, keep going. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, so, so, so this was me as a kid, this is the, the 70s. If here, I was not worried about anything, about what to eat what to wear, my mom said, put this on, got it. And if you see that shirt, it's very topical. You see some railroad tracks there, Bill, uh, for train sets, et cetera. <laughs> That's a good- Good shirt, topic. good shirt. Yeah, yeah, a, a good topic. Now, you don't want to see my pants because believe me, I had some big shoes and some bell bottoms, but I was into, you know, that's why I grew up and I have fun. Of course, music, of course, they didn't have CDs there, but I put that as a stamp. Music was my stuff. Every, every once a week, parents would clean the house and I would just clean up all the records, put some of the spray on it. And this little brush, special brush to wipe them down. So I really was into music. And that's why you saw that picture from uh, my, uh, the Air Force days that I was into music. Now, this other uh, stamp here has a buzz because I remember uh, going to the doctor to get a checkup and the doctor asked me, he's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I told him, a bus driver. After I said that, it was deep, quiet, there's nothing silence, nothing happened. And all I know was back to my mom. And she never asked a follow up question. But the thing he didn't understand, what I meant by bus driver. When I said bus driver, I knew every route, I timed every bus, I knew the schedule. And every time we went with my mom on the bus, I was so impressed by the bus driver because they knew everybody. They talked, they, they chit-chatted, they say, how you doing? You know, customer courtesy. So I really was into that. But I knew the whole bus schedule, the timing system, the transfer, et cetera. So I was very analytical. Now, another thing, during that time frame, the mid 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 seventies, I started going to my parents' room, my father's room, and using his cologne. Now his cologne is not just regular bottles like now; it was like big bottles in the shape of cars and very heavy, and you can see liquid. Now the reason I started using cologne there was because for some reason, I had some puppy love with my fourth grade teacher. I had a crush on him, so 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 that's the reason why I was using cologne because my parents were like, oh my god, you wake early, you dressed up. You're brushing your teeth, et cetera, what's going on here? But that was the reason. Now, another reason was, like I said, I enjoyed this time period because I collect my matchbox. It wasn't a Hot Wheels product, but it was matchbox. Every time we did grocery shopping, my mom always gave me one new box of Hot Wheels. And then as far as TV, of course, Sesame Street and my favorite character has been Grover. So when I'm collecting stamps, 
this is how I feel. Not like I look, but this is how I feel. So I was more fortunate than uh, than Ponce de Leon, and he had no clue that I was going to show up in Florida 477 years later. <laughs> now Mississippi, transition to Mississippi. This is what I've done a presentation about, but this is, was my mom's favorite stamp, which became my favorite stamp in 2017. Now, of course, I was stationed in North Carolina, and I was in Liberia, and then all of a sudden, on the computer there, I got orders. Hey, you going to Puerto Rico for your last assignment? I'm like, wow, I'm happy. Everybody's happy, more is happy. But then all of a sudden, they changed my orders, and they said, you going to Mississippi. And of course, knowing that I was married, it took me a couple of days to tell my wife, and like I said, really stuttered, I was like, Mississippi, Mississippi, couldn't get it out. But one positive thing about Mississippi was, of course, that I was from Mississippi. And so we decided to go to uh, report to a duty station at Camp Shelby. But we went all around Florida, went to Florida, then went to Mississippi. And then we started enjoying it because people are very, I mean, very nice people here. And they, you know, uh, say hi to you, they talk. So I love Mississippi. Uh, and then of course we stopped this place, Bob's Ice Cream. And it's the best ice cream I ever had, ever. But then I get to go, since I got stationed here in 2015, I did go to the World Stamp Show, 2016. Only spent a few days there. And of course, then those are my two main topics that I collect. And then uh, Mississippi, I did go to the uh, 20 year anniversary of uh, the state of Mississippi. And then that's when I became a Penguins on Stamp uh, unit member. And then also in 2018, uh -huh. ATM member, which I approached uh, Ms. Vera and Dawn and say, hey, I want to join the ATA. And they're like, What's, we don't understand you. I say, I want to join the ATA, but I just had my tonsils removed the day prior. So I still went to that show to join the ATA. And then of course I retired in 2018 and this stamp came out, the flag deck. And then during the whole controversy, the Mississippi flag, this is the flag the stamp that I use because it has 20 stars and Mississippi is a 20 year state. So Mississippi, a magnolia, is known as the Grand Flora, is both our state flower and a state tree. And then I put this here because when I told Isbelia, hey, my mom's favorite stamp was Mississippi. And I told this is what I heard from my mom. And I did that in my past presentation. And like Felito would say, let me sip it from Magnolia as mi favorito. So I told her, hey, my mom said, hey, Felix. And the reader was Felito. The stamp from uh, uh, with the Magnolia is her favorite. But of course, my wife, she said that my mom probably just heard that I heard this according to, to her. Because I read mean, sometimes I don't hear. I listen, but I don't hear or listen or hear. Etc. with her. So she said that, but I was pretty sure that I know what I heard, especially when it's the word stamp. If you put anything stamp and any conversation, I'm pretty sure you're going to get my attention. Now, what I did was I did a little business card, you know, because uh, I was going to a lot of stamp shows and, uh, and I, was, I still wasn't an ATA member. That's why you don't see ATA there, but my new one does have it. Put the Magnolia on my website and just a way to promote the hobby. And then what I decided was in 2017 during my mom's one university, a way to honor her and, and to cope, I did uh, put a tree, vanilla tree, it's called Little Gem. It won't grow no more than 20 feet. So I put it there in front of the house. It's 28 feet away. So that's the day she passed away, 28 February. So 20 feet away from my library, which I'm working on. I hope during my next presentation, you'll be able to see my new stamp library. Now, uh, last year when I did a presentation, this happened during Mother's Day, two uh, manolias actually bloomed which was very, very good. Now, filter organizations, local stand clubs. I tell everybody it's important to support local stand clubs. And if you see the ATA has a lot of chapters and study units and without them, we're not gonna have the ATA. Now, as far as the APS ATA, American First Day Cover Society, those are the club called the big three. Those three need to be supported. If you belong to all three sides, excellent. But if you have to pick one, like I tell everybody, ATA is like an insurance company. They're all insurance companies. ATA is like Liberty Mutual, you know? You get more than what you pay for and the things you can customize. An example would be, you don't have to buy all the stock catalogs. If you only collect birds, then you get a topic of check, uh, you get a, a check, ATA checklist. So we are Liberty Mutual. And of course, if I could take that song and recreate it instead of Liberty, 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 be topical, topical, topical. And they had the best commercial and also they had the best uh, evening. And uh, so that's why I like the ATA. And of course, it's the, the out of all three society to me is, is the best one because we provide presence in social media and at, and at stamp shows. So study units are important. And of course they produce journals and handbooks. Those are also important. And of course, resources and, and of course, philatelic friends. That's something very important now, especially with the new member directory 
that if you want to go, if you're an ATM member, you can find me there. And the first thing you're going to see a logo for Penguin because I collect Penguins. Okay, now Topical Tuesdays and Throwback Thursday, that's something managed currently by uh, Michelle Abrezzo. And these are important because again, this is where Philtech friends. I know somebody, I'm not going to mention your name. So uh, uh, Michelle Abrezzo put a post about, hey, what do you collect but stop collecting? And somebody said, well, I collect Mad Tea, but I'm really not collecting anymore. I kind of stopped. But the thing is, if you have Philatelic friends, we can help you out because we might know another area that might improve your thematic exhibit or your topic exhibit. It's an example. Like for, if we collect manatees, Puerto Rico's, even though we know there's a manatee county in Florida, but that's actually a town in Puerto Rico called manatee. Manatee in Spanish is with the I there, and the same thing as manatee. And mm -hmm. the, the manatee in Puerto Rico is actually the official mammal of Puerto Rico. So then you can expand to the town manatee to your exhibit. So that's a way to enhance it. And of course, there'll be excellent one tape, one page exhibit. Hint, hint to the ATA president. Now, other societies. Now, this is the ASPPP, and I built what I belong to. I became a member when the COVID started, because of course I couldn't do anything, so I became a member. And the reason I became a member because they collect souvenir posters, philatelic pages, and panels. And uh, I've been looking for it, and then in 1937, the post office did not issue posters. That started in, in 1959, and they had this person named Cannon. This is a, a Cannon page. So I told him what I wanted. Then a year later, I get this email. He said, hey, I heard you like Cannon pages. You collect Puerto Rico. I said, yes. And then he said, well, I got a collection. So your email, I'll tell you how much I want for it. I didn't even think about it. Just paid him for what he wanted, and then I got the collection. The interesting thing is that I'm the third person, the custodian of this collection. And if you see here, it says Canon Pages, and this is 001 out of 800. So I basically got the first set of the whole collection there that was passed on to me. And the interesting part is that I can include this in an exhibit, but what Canon Pages are, they were celebrating from 19 to, uh, 1985 all the way to 2009, 50 years back. So 1935, whatever stamps came out, uh, this uh, Jim Cannon was sent out to the post office to get the 50th uh, anniversary first day of issue. And he created, you know, make sure he got his uh, actual postmark for Puerto Rico. So, of course, the stamp, which is my, my favorite stamp, first stamp, 1937. So then 50 years later, wow. 1987, so he got that canceled. So in total, it's 800 pages, but I was able to obtain page one. Now, exhibiting 21, of course, attending stamp show, I think is very important. Now, to recruit members, that depends. I, I still think that you can recruit more members outside of stamp shows. Uh, just by displays in different locations for references for AATA Topical Ventures, uh, joint photography organizations like AAPE if you want to exhibit, but also, of course, we have our book, our handbook for exhibit, uh, Villa Friends, and our mentory, uh, the, our directories, online resources, and of course, AATA page one exhibit. So I'm going to talk about the AATA exhibit. Uh, the website is ataexhibits.com. And now has own, so this is serious. It now has its own website and it's attached to the ATA. Now I did my page and of course it's not that hard. If I could do it, it's not that hard. And of course I like doing landscape and I don't like a lot of rules that I was able to use a background and just do whatever I wanted to do. And uh, so I really enjoyed it and a lot of people got to see it. So that was the key. And I feel like, you know, part of the other uh, group there, but I recommend it. And uh, as long as they got those guidelines, I'll be submitting one more this year. And then of course, that's the website. Uh, for the one page exhibit, and of course, atexhibits.com to learn more information. I highly recommend it. Like I said, you don't have to be a member, but hopefully, by the end of this uh, presentation, if you're not a member, you'll join the ATA. Uh, that's the handbook. If you do exhibit, this is the one I recommend. There's a lot of books out there, but I think this is one of the most updated. And if you use this and, uh, with also the AAP website, you'll definitely uh, uh, have a better exhibit and have more knowledge. Now, promoting the, the hobby, future stamp collectors, my focus is always going to be the youth. But like I said earlier, if you feel young, then you're good. Uh, local community, that's very important that you become the subject matter expert local community. You know, what, what are the post office in the local area? You know, getting uh, uh, postal history uh, and just trying to archive it, work with local clubs. And uh, that's important. Partnerships, partnerships could be with schools, partnerships could be with the post office, partnerships could be with anything. Uh, other societies like last... Uh, Last month, I did a, a ATA Adventure Hub at, in Louisiana. And of course, Ann Byler was there and the, the rest of the Crescent City Stamp Club. So it was a good event. Uh, local events, and it doesn't have to be stamp related. It could be any local event. And, uh, and, and I, I highly recommend that if you try 
And of course, stamps anytime, anywhere. I deploy with stamps everywhere I've been. And I'm, I mean, anywhere, I mean, anywhere. I told my wife, I, if I'm ever like injured in the house and she had to call the ambulance and they're driving me uh, on the ambulance and I'm still talking and, you know, they're saying they're trying to stop me from bleeding. And I'll be like, you know, you collect stamps about blood on stamps. And I'll be like, do you know Gene Wang? And I can keep on and keep on and make them stamp collectors until they get me to the hospital. Now, promoting the hobby, another way is sometimes it's taken from the known to the unknown. Now, I talked about it before, something that kids know. So I like watching movies, and I think Klaus, like I said, it was uh, uh, in 2019, and it's a great movie to know about how the sending letters and the postman, et cetera, is a great movie. Mm-hmm. And I can and especially I picked this one, and she picks movies that kind of are kind of tough on the outside, but I'm really not that tough. And sometimes this one made me choke and almost uh, drop a tear there. But it's a it's a good uh, it's a good movie. The other one is School of Rock. Of course, if I got to do the remake. OB School of Stamps. And, uh, but this is one from Jack Black. It's an awesome movie, how he works with the kids. And it's, uh, that was in, in 2003. Now, of course, I've been getting ready from Boston 2026 World Expo since 2016, since I was first able to attend. I think that was the best show I've been to, uh, even though I didn't go the whole time. And I'm surprised I didn't even stop by the ATA and they had no clue the ATA, which, I, which is shocking. But the thing was, if you see the, the on Facebook, a lot of people are doing 10-year challenges. So I said, you know what? I could do a 10-year challenge, you know, 10 years ago without a beard, not with a beard, but I don't think that's really a challenge. So I said, you know what? My 10-year challenge is kind of when I did it for the, at the World Stamp Show. And most people have seen this photo, me jumping up. And uh, it took a whole bunch of tries. And eventually I said, that's the one that's barely on. So she took it with her phone, et cetera. But then I want to do that in 2026. But what I realized, and I put a picture to kind of explain that, that's going to be hard jumping up. I don't either have to be dropped down or being hung by some cables because at the rate I'm going, I'm not going to be able to do it. But my intent is to do it in 2026. So if you need another reason to go to Boston 2026, that's a reason right there. <laughs> now, promoting the hobby. Now, of course, there's a lot of rules when you're flying, and I want to make sure I was not in trouble. So I saw things and I got some ideas. So I'll talk, you know, when you fly, you get the safety brochure there, et cetera. So then I said, you know what? Let me replace it. Shouldn't get in trouble. So that's what I did. I put a membership form in topical time and then I left it there. So I don't know if a stewardess, a pilot, or the clean crew became a member because of this. I have no idea. But I think that for Boston 2026, every aircraft flying into Boston should have a, you know, a, a topical time in there and, a, and an AT application. But I don't have that many contacts to make that happen. So, I, so that's what I did there. Now, one thing I thought about, but I couldn't do anything because, of course, I didn't want to get arrested was that I saw a lady about four rows to the left side, and I saw that she had a, butter, a shirt with butterflies on. She had a keychain with butterflies, and her purse had butterflies. And I saw, and I added all that up. I said, man, she may want to collect butterflies as a topical. <laughs> and if I had to taste a topical, I would have given it to her, but I didn't because I didn't want to get arrested, so I didn't do anything. But it gave me an idea when this uh, COVID-19 stuff is over and all these rules, then I could approach people and say, hey, because that's a way to indicate her that I'm pretty sure she would have became a, a, a ATA member. Now, of course, I'm always driving this belly around. I'm kind of her security. I always she wants to go to all these stores. So then I use my favorite bottle water with the ATA topical logo. And uh, anytime if I decide to want to do a, be an Uber driver, then of course I just got qualified not too long ago uh, going to Atlanta show, but I'm not going to talk about that here. And, uh, but uh, that's a way to promote the hobby. I say, hey, where are you going to? And kind of show them the bottle up there and say, hey, TA, oh, you want to know more? Just check the, the glove compartment there and I'll give them stuff. Another way is that since I take my wife and I walk around, and of course, I do not work at Hobby Lobby, but when I'm bored, I just start doing things. You see, I try to promote ATA and I leave ATA there. So people might have no idea what I mean, but, but up here, I don't know what it says, but it says, please do not. So hopefully it does not, please do not rearrange the letters, but I would never know because nothing really happened. But that's what I kind of do when I get a chance, especially Best Buy, log into the computers and just bring the uh, American Topical uh, website. Now, promoting the hobby. This happened recently, February 17th. Uh, this is from one of our teacher's friends. I kind of hide the name there because I don't know if she wants her name on me sharing this stuff. So she's a third grade teacher and she was teaching her kids about uh, perimeters, how to you know, calculate perimeters. <laughs> and all of a sudden this bird flew inside the classroom and it, there was no, she, she, everybody got, you know, some got scared, some screamed, some cracked up, some laughed, et cetera. 
So there was a bird that was there and then another teacher came and helped out and got the bird out. So then when I saw that, I said, that's an opportunity to talk because first thing I thought was, wait a minute, that bird's on a stamp. And of course that's the redheaded woodpecker is also known as the flying checkerboard. So then I said, I told her, hey, wow, I see this as opportunity to calculate the perimeter of a stamp through the image of the redheaded woodpecker also known as the flying checkerboard. And if you see the bottom, she said, let me add this to my assessment tomorrow. I had to teach them last week what a postage stamp was. And that made me happy that she had to teach the students what a stamp it was, the postage stamp was. They had no clue. It was in a word problem and most of them had no prior knowledge. So I told Austin, thank you for taking the time to teach about stamps. So that's why I was talking about partnerships and working with teachers. And that's a good way to promote the hobby. Now, my latest topic is the bee hummingbird. This bird right here, out of the 9,000 plus species of birds out there, is the smallest bird in the world. It's about two to 2.4 inches uh, the size, and it's about a total of 17, so it's a, uh, which I call the, a mini topic, 17 total stamps that have been issued worldwide. And that's only in Cuba and three locations in Cuba, but that's the smallest bird. And of course, if you see here, the pencil, you can kind of get an idea how small that bird is. <clears throat> Now, how to say goodbye and, and adios. And I see this in pre ks in small classroom and you see see Yasun raccoon, take care polar bear, uh, door dinosaur, toodaloo kangaroo to your house, little mouse. I said, you know what? We could probably add some stamps to this. So then that's what I did with different examples. So instead of see you later alligator, then you can just put the alligator there at the end instead of the word alligator in Florida. Hasta mañana iguana, you can also do it in Spanish. <laughs> then you can put the iguana stamp like that you get kids involved then of course i put the fairy one my penguins till then penguin and then put a penguin from new zealand now of course like i told you there's no show at the end but if you were at the presentation that day then you would have went straight a direct line straight to the american top association large super adventure hub and we had everything available and to become members and buy stuff but if you don't like I said, if you decide you want to become a member today, you can always visit our americantopple.org website, our Facebook page, or if you want to exhibit, our atxhibits.com. Now, this is another, like I said, uh, I'm an AT ambassador, and I kind of cover Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, part of Georgia. And uh, like I said, uh, the good thing about these AT Adventure Hub that we provide presence of everything we have, our stores and, and our, our personnel, and not yet the Great American Stamp Show. And like you see here, I haven't had a uh, a phone there at the uh, hotel. I think it was a direct line to the ATA president and executive director. Then of course, every ATA adventure hubs, we, it comes with ambassadors are included. So they're there, knowledgeable information and we provide you stuff. And uh, anything you want to know about the ATA or other, any other chapters, like if it's Esper, if it's Penguins, if it's study units, if it's chapters, if it's exhibiting, anything you have, we will, if we don't know the answer, we'll find a way to get you the answer. And get you to join the ATA. Now that completes my presentation. Thank you for everybody attending today and I'm ready for some questions. I'm here to stop sharing.